auditory vestibular uh, anatomy. So I'm going to show you uh, the the ear, the um, middle ear, and the inner ear. So I'm going to get this, take our skull, our friend the skull here. We're going to remove the calvary at the top. And if you remember from one of the other videos, uh, you might have, this is the temporal bone. Remove his jaw as well. So you have your temporal bone is on the side. The temporal bone contains a few things, the zygomatic process. It's got this mastoid process uh, toward the posterior aspect. Underneath, you got a styloid process. You got the little man, uh, uh, mandibular fossa. And then right posterior to that, kind of in line with the zygomatic process, is this external auditory meatus. Is that little ear hole there. Okay. The little ear hole right there. So on the side of your head, this is where that cartilaginous flap, uh, the pina, would be your, your ear, your oracle. So inside the skull, and then there's a squamous portion of the temporal bone, inside the skull, the temporal bone also has this ridge, this petrous portion, or petrified, petrous ridge right there. And then inside that bone, kind of lined up with the, the external auditory matus, Inside that bone, we're going to find the inner ear, okay? So, set the skull down for a moment. I'll drop it. And then I drew this out, so you can think of this as um, the running through that petrous ridge on the temporal bone. You're going to have the external auditory meatus, right? That's the ear hole. Out here is your ear. You got your ear lobe and your little tragus and your anti-tragus and the helix and all the little uh, flips and folds. And then you've got the, the ear canal itself. And it doesn't just run straight into your head. You see with that uh, petrous bone in the adult, your ear canal is going to run actually a little anteriorly as well. Okay, so a little forward. Then you're going to get, uh, you go into your skull through the temporal bone, you're in the bone. Then there's this structure. This is the so-called inner ear. Right? And then this, uh, there's a middle portion between the inner ear, which is fully encased in the bone, and that external auditory meatus that's referred to as the middle ear. Okay? The middle ear. This uh, opening, this is the uh, tube that runs down to the back of your throat. This is your eustachian tubes. Okay? That's the eustachian tube, and it opens into the space known as the middle ear. Uh, the way this works, it looks awful complex, but I'll try to keep this pretty simple and straightforward. The inner ear is the structure that is going to relay uh, information in, I'll use uh, red. Uh, there's a, lots of, a lot of little neural endings that converge and run into, uh, into the brain, and there's little neural connections from over here that will converge and run into the brain. And these two portions are going to come one from this, this snail-shaped structure called the cochlea. Okay. And then from these three structures over here, which are called the semicircular canals. Okay. The semicircular canals are going to be part of the vestibular system, uh, along with two parts in here, uh, utricle and a saccule. We'll get to those in a minute. And then um, the cochlea is going to be your auditory or hearing. And then those two will join together in the cranial nerve 8, the vestibulocochlear nerve coming from the vestibule and the semicircular canals and the cochlea. They take in hearing and balance together. Okay. How it works is sound waves will come and they're directed into the external auditory meatus and they're going to travel down this canal and they're going to vibrate this structure called a tympanic membrane. Okay. Tympany, same root word, so you'd probably know this more familiar as the eardrum. That's the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane will then relay that uh, the sound wave uh, across to the inner ear by vibrating or moving these three ossicles, these tiny bones, little ossicles. They're the uh, malleus, the incus, and the stapes, or the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. And they really do kind of look like that, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And these three little ossicles are in the middle ear space, which um, is um, 
continuous with the back of your throat, so it helps equalize ear pressure with the external auditory meatus and the eustachian tube on either side of that tympanic membrane, which is a very uh, tightly stretched, very thin tissue and susceptible to, to damage if the pressure builds up too much. If you get some pressure in the inner ear, or sorry, the middle ear due to, say, bacteria and they're producing gases or pus or whatever, you can get a lot of pressure uh, or even air pressure, atmospheric pressure on this tympanic membrane, which is innervating, causes pain. Um, if you yawn or chew gum or stretch your mouth real wide uh, or sometimes push, um, force air through the eustachian tube, you can uh, pop that eardrum. That's what that sensation noise is when your ears pop uh, and you go up in a plane or something. Little kids that are yowling and tugging at their ear, maybe they've got a middle ear infection and the pressure is putting on the eardrum causing pain. Uh, there's different things you can do there. Mm, talk about that in another video. So uh, the sound waves come in and sound waves are nothing more than the compaction and rarefication of molecules in a media, uh, in this case air. So you got some air molecules pressed together and then space between. They're directed into the ear. They push on the tympanic membrane, which causes the little ossicles to, to relay that uh, oscillating or vibration um, signal across to the vestibule, which is this structure here. The vestibule has this little, um, it's a bony structure, and it's got this little membranous window here called the oval window that the stapes uh, pushes right up against. Okay. Now, uh, when, it, when it vibrates because of the the uh, sound waves, and they move the little ossicles, it'll push in and out on that little diaphragm, that little thin tissue, that's the oval window, and then the entire inside of this structure is filled with a fluid. We'll go into more detail in a specific cranial nerve 8 video that's just highlights. Uh, that fluid is then, um, becomes the new media for uh, the, the waves, which were sound waves, right, to be transferred through. So now that fluid is moving. This fluid is arranged through this long structure, the cochlea, uh, kind of like the keys on a, a piano uh, with higher notes at one end and lower notes at the other. And depending on which of the hair cells that the waves of that fluid um, cause to, to bend, to get a depolarized and send a signal in, and your brain unwraps all that, and that's how we interpret sound. At the end of the cochlea, like at the snail shell that was rolled up, there's a round window that acts as a dampener on the end of those fluid waves so they don't slosh back through the cochlea. Okay? The, same, uh, the same sort of fluid exists in the utricle and saccule, two membranous sacs inside the vestibule, and these semicircular canals. And the semicircular canals also have hair cells, and their fluid is moved not necessarily by the sound waves, but by when I, I move my my head around in the three orthogonal uh, positions, right? If I bend left, bend right, bend forward, extend, and rotate, the fluid in those cells will move, right? Like this one that's in sort of a flat or horizontal plane, then I've got this one that's in the sagittal plane, and then one in a frontal plane. And when I say laterally bend to the left, the fluid in the left semicircular canals will slosh medial, and the fluid in the, the left would slosh in a lateral direction. Those signals would send in after uh, depolarizing little hair cells, send the signal into my brain where I'd interpret that as to which direction I'm moving. Uh, the utricle is another membranous part in here that's going to um, measure linear acceleration. So if I'm here or you're sitting in a car and the car takes off fast and you feel that pressure pushing back, that's the fluid in the utricle. The saccule is going to let me know my acceleration in the field of gravity, jumping up or down. So if I jump up, the fluid in the saccule is pushed down, depolarizing and sending signal in that I've, I've moved up or in the opposite direction. Okay? So um, it seems like it wouldn't work, but this is really the way it works. Air molecules come in in different waves down this tunnel. They're focused on this little flap of skin, which vibrates, which moves this little bone, which rattles that little bone, which shakes this little bone, which pushes on another membrane, which sends waves through fluid, which go down this long canal and are damped at the end. And depending on which of the little hair cells in there that the waves depolarize, that's how the signals get in. And then the utricle, saccule of the vestibule and the semicircular canals will give you... Um, sensation, um, signals that go in, in, in the sense of uh, motion in the field of gravity, linear acceleration, and in orthogonal movement. So that is the uh, quick overview of the vestibular 
uh, auditory sort of nerve and the apparatus that sits inside your skull. And this is all very, very tiny. I've shown some of the students in the lab um, the little ossicles and the inner and middle ears that reside right here in that petrous ridge of the temporal bone. All right. Um, I will have some other videos up soon where I will go through each of the 12 cranial nerves in detail. Uh, or you can check out the cranial nerve overview, which would be uh, good enough for a, a, a test just to kind of reacquaint yourself with that information. And this is how your hearing and uh, balance are related. So check out some other videos and enjoy this one.